Welcome back to the homestead. Like I had said in uh, one of the previous videos, we were going to be starting to renovate the upstairs of the farmhouse, and I figured before we really got into it, I could show you a little bit, you know, kind of what it looks like, and it would also give you an idea kind of what the whole house looked like before we did anything. Like I said, really the outside is completely done already. There are a few windows you'll see upstairs that need to be replaced, but come on in and see. I don't think this has been done since maybe the 50s, but. So this is their little entrance way. And as you can see, I'm hoping, it needs to be completely renovated on the inside. And then this is their stairs up. And as you go up, we already replaced one of the windows here. I'll show you again. So as you can see, this window already got replaced when we were doing some of the outside work. But here's the upstairs. When we were doing over the heat pumps, we had a heat pump put in up here. These are all the windows that need to be replaced as well. Another thing you can see, I'm hoping, the one nice thing about up here is it's got some of the nicest views of the whole house, of the back fields where the animals usually are, especially spring and summer. So they'll have beautiful views once it's done. And as you can see, it's just old 50 style that hasn't had much done to it. Real low down. This will be the living room area. And then over here is where the kitchen was. And then through that door is a bedroom. And then this is the old bathroom. And again, this has all got to completely come out. The old shower, the toilet's already gone. So as you can see, it's not a big space, it's quite small. It would be like tiny house living, but probably more than what a single person or even a couple would need. You know, it's got a little living room, it will have a nice kitchen in it when we're done, bedroom and then a small bathroom. But kind of give you an idea as what it looked like before we started, and we'll just give you updates as we go along doing the project. I was just going to get dinner going and I realized I should film this and share it with you. This is a recipe we enjoy from the cookbook All About Braising by Molly Stevens. They're one pot meals, which is always a favorite here. But we um, got our meat share from our steer um, last spring and we asked for all the bones because we always like to make bone broth. And when we got them, we, you know, you can see it's labeled soup bones. Well, we were looking and noticed these are basically pieces of the shank the, on the cow. So this is all meat and here's the bone. So we went ahead and made Osogoko with it and it was delicious. So tonight we have two more of these, I think the last couple left and we're gonna go ahead and cook it up and throw it in the oven. It takes two hours in the oven on a semi-slow cook. Perfect meal for winter. Keep the oven going. I'm gonna just salt and pepper these. I am avoiding um, gluten and dairy currently, so I'm going to alter this recipe. It's really a variation of the um, recipe from this cookbook. So instead of dredging these shanks in flour, I'm just gonna salt and pepper them. So much meat on them, it's crazy. So I'm gonna get this pan getting hot so when I bring over the shanks to sear, this is really hot. I'm gonna go ahead and use that lard that we rendered down. Normally the recipe calls for butter. I'm avoiding the dairy, so I'm gonna go with the lard. Give that a minute and I'll salt and pepper these. Oil is steaming, so I'm gonna go ahead 
to add the shanks. You want to get a good sear on both sides. So while that's searing, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the vegetables ready. Just one carrot diced. One stalk of celery. One onion. So these veggies are veggies we grow. We don't grow celery, and often we don't even have it in the fridge. We don't have it, we just omit it. We don't run to the store for it. Um, but we always have onions, garlic, and uh, the share of really good harvested carrots. You can really smell this cooking. Check on the Oh yeah, beautiful. So you can see that it's starting to sear up. Flip it over. Give it a few more minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the garlic. These are three large cloves of garlic. It does not call for large ones, but we love garlic. more minutes. Great. That's really good. Now we're going to go ahead and add the carrots, celery, and onions. I'm just leaving the fat that's in there. going to bring these down to um, until they're kind of soft, but we're not trying to caramelize them. While we're waiting for that, let's go down in the root cellar and grab a couple more ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and grab um, a bone broth that we have pressure canned. When we process our chickens, we end up taking all the bones from the um, carcasses that we took the meat off of and we make a huge batch of bone broth and then we pressure can it so we have it on hand for a night like tonight when we decide to cook something and it's not already available for us. And this recipe also calls for white wine so we actually have some wine left over from our daughter's wedding. So I'm gonna grab a bottle of that while we're down here. And I think that's all we need. These veggies are looking nice and soft. I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic. And the bay leaf. I'm gonna add two, these are pretty small. Let it cook about one minute. So now we're going to add the wine and we're going to let this come up to a boil. It will end up deglazing the pan. But we're going to actually cook this until it's about half the liquid. About half the liquid has been reduced. So that will take about five minutes. So this is reduced by at least half 
and it is to glaze the pan. So now we're going to add one half cup of the stock, the bone broth, and then one cup of calls for diced tomatoes. We don't have any tomatoes diced, so we have our puree. So I'm just going to go ahead and add roughly a cup of that. Again, recipes and suggestions. We're going to want to get this boiling again. This is our braising liquid. And it's going to reduce, about, boil for about 10 minutes, reduce, and then we're going to get this in the oven. So while we're reducing the braising liquid, I'm going to go ahead and make the marmalada that gets put in at the very end before you serve. We have actually never made this before because we don't usually have um, parsley in the winter here, but we went out of our way to get it and a lemon um, because it sounds so good and the author of the cookbook says she wouldn't make this recipe without it. So we're gonna give it a whirl just for fun. So it's a teaspoon, roughly a teaspoon of garlic minced. And then it only calls for a teaspoon of the parsley. I'm going to add substantially more, seeing that we have this nice big bunch of it. Then I'm going to go ahead and add the rind of one whole lemon. I've already washed this. Feels like a super treat to have a lemon in the middle of the winter. This smells really good. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit and then let it sit here on the counter until the braising of the meat is finished, which will be a couple hours later. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add these shanks right on top of this liquid. It's really not too much juice in here, but we certainly don't want to waste that. Add the lid and put it in the oven. The oven is 350 degrees, excuse me, 300 degrees. Ooh, that is toasty. while to make sure it's not cooking too fast and if it is we'll turn it down. So it's been a couple hours. It's time to add the gremolata. It says just to sprinkle it on top. then put it back in the oven uncovered for about 15 minutes. It smells really good. And in the meantime, we're just boiling up some potatoes and we're gonna boil up some extra carrots to go with it. So we just pulled it out of the oven. It's all ready for dinner. Um, thanks for joining us on the homestead today. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.